The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. Tiger Conditions Hour. My pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, noon until 1 p.m. And I am also the author of the opening call dating newsletter. Let's look at what's going on here. The Dow's up 104 at 27,063. Two things simultaneously. And I've seen this for over two weeks now. Well, we've been looking, actually, it's almost three weeks. When we were looking at that Chapman Wave Peak C1, C2 double top at 27,120, and then seven points two days later, um, just underneath it, that's why it's called C2 instead of a peak, a, a leg D, uh, we were waiting for the moving averages to cross negative. The MACD was okay, not great, but okay. Stochastic was not too bad. And all of a sudden, Friday, we got that sudden move to the upside. Um, I missed something on Thursday's close. I did not see until the following day that there was a what I call a Chapman Wave trim gauge flashing, very high reading, which suggested there should be a 9 to a 15-point rally in the S&P futures, which should help the Dow and the S&P cash positions. I, I knew that there'd be some kind of a rally. It was probably 80 to 100 points more than I anticipated. Got to respect that. That meant that it, it stopped within this down channel right here, what I call the Chapman Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. These are all techniques that over the decades I've been building up just a plethora of techniques in my huge Sears and Roebuck uh, tool toolkit. Um, and all of a sudden today we spike, we gap up at the opening from the close on Friday, which was 27,000, I think it was. Just over 27,000. Yeah, 20, 27,000. No, it was 26,958. That's right. And then it gaps up over the high of Friday. And it opens today, the Dow, at 27,040. Well, it went all the way to 27, the 167 outside of this resistance zone. Comes back and tests it. The MACD is still good. Stochastic, as I say, at 76%. It's, it's not bad. It's just not great over 80 percent and even better over 90 percent so what's what's important here is that what we're looking at is you go to the monthly chart the weekly chart and you've got exactly the same thing we went inside to the zone that is what i call the repellent resistance area the magd is not yet positive the stochastic still under 80 percent and 73 percent so this is more news related and at the same time, I've got to look at the monthly chart and say, wow, what a nice candle. Slumps all the way to the 25,938 nine period exponential moving average, goes a tad under it, and then zoop. So far, October candle looking great. Now, why do I make a big deal about this candle? And I've been doing it for quite some time because my experience has been, at least with the Dow, that if the Dow survives the usual September, October slump, and closes October really well and actually starts the first week of November at a yearly high or recovery high or some very important move to the upside that says I've gotten away from the low that was made in the fall fall. Um, normally you'd look at the I would look at the year end as being within a couple of really close. In this case, within a, a few hundred points of where we are as we get into November. And that's why this candle is going to be so important, because it's saying that a strong close in October invariably leads to at least a decent December. Uh, let's see, October of last year. What was this? This was uh, July, August 9, 10. Oops, 11. Yeah, so October last year. We went all the way to a new recovery high, 29,000, uh, 26,951. Wow, that's where we were at the close on Friday. And went higher in, this, in, um, 
in the month, it went to 26,951. So that's higher than the uh, September candle. But it didn't close above the high of September. It plunged. And then we saw that very sharp move. So that fall uh, decline was delayed more, more not in September, but it started at the end of October into November, December. We don't, we don't have to think about that too much because we know that was a really sharp uh, decline. But most importantly, the rally back stalled underneath the previous 27,398 high of July, uh, yep, of July. And now we went to the 27,306 high, and that was in September. And so far, we, we're working within one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth. So that's eight weeks from the July high to the September high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the eighth week. And if you remember, uh, we were looking at the nine-month high of, of January of 2018 in the Dow, 26,616. And then it pulls back to 23,340s, rallies to the all-time high of 26,951, drops really sharply to 21,712, eight months. It takes eight months exactly to get back to 27,398, making a new recovery high by slightly, and then pulls back. So we're looking at the rhythm of these, these uh, matching time frames. That's why this is very important. Okay, let's get out of this and let's go and say, wait a minute, the S&P, though, has gone to an all-time high. The NDX has gone to an all-time high. What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the fact that at 3,038, the high today is 3,044.08 so far. I've got this as a leg F. It could have recycled. I even circled it. Uh, that could be F slash B. The MAC needs good, stochastic so good. The resistance level, this trend line resistance takes you to, this week, it takes you to 3050, 3050. The high so far, 3044. Really good action underneath that dashed line. We'll see what happens. The week is young. Anything can happen. I want to talk about it in relation to certain stocks. I want to get to this quickly. But now we've started a new leg. There's no other way that I can count it, even that's an E and an F and a G. You can't go to an H. There is no H. This is a leg B really positive monthly chart, and it's saying that over the period of the next, so you've gotten to a leg B in the chap wave, uh, it's seven waves to a D. And we're in wave one, two, three. That means we've got four pullback for a peak B, five for a leg C, six down for a leg uh, for a peak C, and then leg D starts on the seventh wave, so that means you've got, this is the third month, you've got four, five, six, seven, you've got four months to go. You cannot make an all-time high, I mean, you cannot make at least a D in the S&P unless there's a lower high next month, November, a higher high in December, a lower high in January, and a new high in February. So February is the earliest that you can get to a D. D is the Chapman Wave methodology that says if you're in a buy mode, which we're in in the monthly chart, you should go to at least a D. We'll see how that one works out. All right, so that's the S&P up 16. I'll be back in a moment. I want to talk about the goodies and the baddies. I'll be back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, we're back and the Dow is up 107, S&P's up 17, Dow's lagging quite a bit. So here's the 120 minute, oh, sorry 120, this is the 5 minute E-mini chart on the right here. It made a peak F top. Pull back quite sharply. The 10 minute made a peak F in the Chapman Wave methodology. Pull back. So, this is going to be um, quite interesting because if the E mini gives back a chunk of the gain, and by the end of the day, but I would even say by 215, if the E mini is, uh, it's a 3037 right now, December E mini, if it's at 3. 1,042 or higher, that'll be really good action. It's come back, it's had an intraday pullback, uh, but if it pulls back and it goes under 3,034, no, 3,033, trades for 20 minutes under 3,023, we might have seen just at least a very short-term top right here. Just a pullback because there's still going to be buying going into the end of October. And if it comes after a dip, that's also fine. But that's what I'm looking at. But it would be really positive if it's up back at the 3,000, say, 43 level. Um, that will be very impressive. But what's really important as far as I'm concerned is that the S&P, this candle with a long wick, suggests that unless in October there is a pullback, that at some point on a daily, doesn't have to be weekly, just a daily basis, closes under 29.16, there could be a, a deeper pullback. So those are the levels to watch. At this point, we're looking at all-time highs. You've got a whole series of resistance levels on the weekly chart from 3.047 to 3.066. All right, let's go on. Now, I, I needed to do this to say in the QQQ, all-time high within slightly rising up-channel resistance, but that candle in the monthly so far, with a few days to go, is very, very impressive. And here the MACD is finally in the monthly chart, crossed slightly positive. And the stochastic is very good at 89%. So that harbors as well for the rest of the week. Let's see how that turns out. I want you to just talk about for a moment about the SMHs, which are the semis. They're up sharply against it up 186 at 128.89. And when you think about it, and it was just December, 
that we were trading at 80.71. This is a big move to the upside. Look at that candle. This has broken all, all boundaries. And um, even a trend line that I, if I put in a trend line in the monthly, it's uh, from just the last three peaks, 120.71 to 123.56. If I join these lines, the top, um, we're talking about, okay, there you are. You're talking about the wicks. If you join the wicks, the uh, wicks, we're above that right now. So far, that's really good action. So that's helping the QQQ, the NDX 100. And if you look at the XLK, I haven't updated this for a couple of days. This is in leg D. And as I said to subscribers to my opening call, uh, we've got to be a little bit careful knowing that we're going to D, E, and F in many of the indices. And we are um, in the MACD and stochastic that I look at. Those weekly and monthly charts are going to be really important. So this is very good action. This is new leg C in the monthly chart. And I, I needed to just, a couple of questions came in. One is, uh, 2019 may be like 1999. So the implication is that we get a January top, and then that's it. We're in for a big, big pullback. I don't see anything like that right now. I just do not see it. We, we don't even resemble a smidgen of what was going on starting uh, at this time, October of 1999, going into the high of 2000. Uh, I shouldn't say a smidgen, because we're talking about October of 1999. And then the high was January of 2000, about the 14th of January. Um, I'm just trying to explain. I'm, just, I'm, I'm thinking of a way to just articulate this. Yeah. As I had said that over the weekend, I should know a lot more just from contacts, people, things that, that would be happening about whether or not there are signs that the public are really getting back into the market. And I have to tell you, uh, it, it was even less than I thought. Uh, there, there are no one that I'm speaking to, other than people who are always are putting money, some money into the market. That is the marketeers. They've always been in. There's just no difference uh, to any, any other time. And there are very few of those around that I, at least in my circle. But what's really important is that a lot of people are saying, wow, with all that's going on right now, this is, how come the market is this high? So, as long as that's the question, and, and the question is not, how long is this great bull market going to last? Um, I, think, I think we're not looking at anything replicating January of, of 2000. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Next question I had is, in the positions that you've had, we know that you were short the Dow. We're not short anymore. I did want to hold the short because it's the only short we had. Uh, everything else is long. In fact, I, I was complaining today, saying I, don't, I can only follow a certain number of positions. When it gets too many, that's almost always where the market turns, whether or not we have shorts or longs, but that's where the market turns. And it's just hard for me to cover that. I like to do a full analysis every couple of days, if not almost every day, for the stocks that we have. So what I did is uh, a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know what? I love the fact that the stocks that, that – have been working well, uh, consolidating. And I wanted to look at, you know, we had Caterpillar, we had United Technologies, we got out of there with some profits, and I was going to get back in. But then I said, you know, in this particular environment, until they really break out, I would much prefer to be in lower price stocks that have the same chart patterns, which have much, much greater potential gains. And that's what we've been doing. So far, quite nicely. Um, in fact, even today, we're looking at uh, one of ours is down 0.45. Uh, another one is up 2.87 percent. This is today alone, besides the other gains that they've made. And another one is up 3.29 percent, uh, which I, I must be at least, um, I think, a 12 percent gain by now, just in a short period of time. And the one that we missed. Uh, no, I'm sorry, it's 3.2%. So 
Yeah, and one that we missed today is up 2.88. All very low, all single digits, single just in the, in the teens. Um, and that's nice. I like that because it, we're putting money to work in the right position, in the stocks that are working right now. I don't know how long they're going to last because these small caps. Sometimes you just got to take your profit and then get out and wait for a big pullback on a percentage term. But anyway, that's what we're doing so far very satisfactorily. Uh, I don't know how long that can last. But and any losses, we're keeping them to about you know, really small, under 1%, just over 1%. Just really important not to get too carried away in any position that you think is a potential uh, opposite. A uh, question about G G B T C. This is Bitcoin. That's up at 10.96. What a day Friday. What a huge move from nothing. It just went from the uh, mid eights to close over 10. And today it's at 10.96. I'll talk about it when we get back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignition's Hour. Tell me. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. That was up 113. So I had a question about, so first of all, the January aspect of it could be some kind of a top. Sure. I'm just saying the kind of top that we saw in 2000, I, I, nothing here replic replicates that at all. Yes. There are many people that have funds or funds of funds or uh, instruments like a SPY or a diamond or Qs, but individual stocks, sure, when you look at the volume, you say volume is shrinking, but you can see volume expand on certain news events, and that means, yeah, there's some people there, but I don't see anything 
that replicates the kind of hysteria that would say to me, um, wow, uh, now, I, now I'm hearing people that don't ever talk to me about the stock market start talking about not just stocks, but to start talking about stocks that have been absolutely fantastic. So uh, that to me says, and also if you look at look, Microsoft, all time high, Apple, all time high, but we're not hearing this kind of talk on an Omega. You remember Omega, the uh, uh, tech company? So, yeah, you don't, you just don't hear that sort of thing. Uh, so, at least I don't. And uh, and I probably be, would, I would be one of those people because just for those people that know that uh, what I do in the market, um, then, you know, they just gravitate towards talking about something that I'm interested in, they're interested in. So it just hasn't happened. I'm not saying it isn't out there. I'm just saying the, the kind of buzz that I'm talking about, I don't see that at all. Next question I had was um, XLE. So it's not so much the XLE, but the certain stocks. But if you look at the XLE, this is a lousy uh, uh, rally. In fact, it's made another arch formation, another A. It's almost like an A failure pattern, although it missed by uh, 10 cents or so going under the previous high, 55.55. That was back in, I think it was May. Oh, sorry, it was August. And... Um, yeah, I don't see anything there right now. Tell you the truth, I'd actually like to see something in the XLE for say energy is doing well. Uh, crude oil, let me just do this quickly. Crude oil right now, crude oil is down 87 cents, gone to a leg C. And uh, there's that cup formation I always talk about. Remember the Chapman wave? What are we looking for? We're looking for arch formations or an inverted V, it's the same thing, going from one point all the way up and then back down to test it. You break it, that can go lower, that's why it's red. Green, because on the upside in the U-shaped pattern or cup pattern, you should go higher. And then, of course, you can get the straight line move up or down. And in this case, down and an arch makes the H pattern, lowercase h, and the re invert reversed Y, that's really what it is, reverse Y has, if you go above the left side lip, that's very positive under certain conditions. Chapman Wave, we're always looking for D, for peak D, the fourth highest peak, to see if other things can happen. Look here, right in the corner, you can see crude oil makes a peak D in the continuous contract at 63.14, September of the 16th, September the 16th, plunges down to 50.99. I would say that's a plunge. Um, and, and it can go E, F, and G, but D is where you expect other things to happen. All right, look, there it went to an E, and then it plunged. So um, that's crude oil. Look at this, the TLT. This is really important. The TLT is making the H pattern right here in the weekly chart. Look, look in the daily. It's made one arch pattern. Now it's in a second arch with a lower high. And does if it takes out the left side low of 136.54 that was made on the 13th of September, just about the time that the market made its high, the TLT was making its low. Now we're looking at a situation where a takeout of that decisively to the downside of this is leg E in the daily um, would say you're going to a leg B in the weekly chart. That says B, really, the MACD is very weak and the stochastic is way down 52%. There's room for the TLT to fall. I'm watching this real closely because this is exactly, this area right here is exactly where you would anticipate there'd be some attempt at support. If there is support, there could be another bounce that will say, okay, now the market can have some of a pullback. I, I, the reason why I'm talking about today, today, Friday, today, and tomorrow as being so important before the weekly uh, Friday close comes and Thursday's end of the month bar, and remember, very often when you get a turnaround the day before the monthly high, and then you follow through sharply to the downside the first trading day of the next month, that often signals some kind of a monthly top is possible. It doesn't have to happen, but it's just a good heads up to say, well, wow, we've already got momentum because by the time the first day of the next month starts, you're already looking at a decisive pullback. I, I'm just thinking here, you see, I, I wanted to make a decision. We were short the Dow. Uh, just not a big deal. Sort of short position, one to one short. Didn't want to get carried away. Why? We've got so many longs. I needed some protection, number one. And number two is I had that. Let me show you this right now. You remember I had this whole bad news cloud cover scenario? So I thought 
should I widen the stop? Because we've only got that one position. We had a fairly tight stop. Should I widen it today? Because this is exactly the moment that in this bad news cloud cover rectangle, I'm showing you the moving averages where we had the sell signal the day before, the high that was made um, in April 22nd or so, and then it pulled back sharply, but it took 10 days before the moving averages crossed negative. So I had to use the Chapman Wing methodology to get the actual turnaround point. Then we got the within seven points of the all-time high in July, but it took 13 days after that, 13 days altogether to break the moving averages to cross negative. Then we went uh, for the, that was uh, in July, then September the 16th, September the 12th, <clears throat> there was a high, but it was a peak C1 or a peak C. Then we re retested seven points off the high, and that was a peak C, um, C2. And then it took 14 sessions before the Dow closed negative. Now what we've done, this is session nine, and the MACD, uh, sorry, the uh, fast moving average, the green line, is still nicely above the 14 period moving average, the black line. And that's saying to me, I was explaining this to my subscribers to my opening call over the weekend. I said, first of all, to do it four times in a row, that's unbelievable to see a technique just work four times in a row consistently. So I'm, I'm thinking this is the opportunity for it to say, hey, I'm done with this. Now we're going to break to the upside. And I'll show you the parameters that we'll be looking at. Most importantly is that what I am looking at is that when the, when the faster moving average has a big move to the downside after being much higher, that's where you get the velocity to the downside. You see there, see the green crosses black and goes pink. Green, big move up, and then it takes its time and then crosses pink. Green, big, or even a bigger move up, has a big turn down, crosses green from green to pink. And now we're still green, and it's very narrow. I've seen this narrow. I wonder if I can show you an example here. Let's go back. Yeah, I've seen this stay narrow for a while, uh, going back, there it is. I've seen it stay narrow for a while. Look, even here when it pulled back sharply back in August of, August of 2018, on the uh, 15th of August, it pulled back, made a low. Look, it didn't turn pink. It just stayed green and it stayed green all the way, narrow but it stayed green until it finally crossed over negative way back on the way, way on the 10th of October, two years ago. And then it was a pullback, a really sharp pullback. That was a big move down to the December 24th, Christmas low. So I'm just saying to you, I'm using If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average
average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks, we'll be back. Yes, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, so I mentioned uh, Jeff Vinnie closed his fund again. Any significance? But, but first, I want to go to Scott in um, Safety Harbor. Scott, how are you? How do you think I am, Basil? 12,500 shares. I couldn't even catch it to, to cash out. I mean, I just cashed out at 1230. I was average cost at 1108. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. I mean, this is just... <laughs> wow. Wow. So, Scott, um, in, within the context of United, United uh, U.S. Steel Corporation, Exxon's symbol trading at 12.26, up 55 cents. That move up has got it to a leg C. It's done that before. It did that, but it stopped right at the trend line resistance on the 1st of October at 11, at uh, 12.66. Then it plunges down to 9.93. And now, from 9.93, the high today is 12.56. A big move up. The weekly chart, this is going to be something I'm going to follow really closely because the stochastic's only at 21% in, uh, in the weekly chart. And the MAGD is really, if I was just looking at the MAGD, and someone said to me, um, recently, United States Steel was trading at about $10. Where do you think it is now? I would have said, wow, with that MACD, it should be up at about $13.70, $14.30. And, with this, and then I look and I say, oh, but wait a minute, the stochastic says it could have been have some slippage. So that's saying to me that there's a bit of a divergence in the technicals, that there's something to do with the uh, some stories going on here with United States Steel, and I don't. I still don't know if this is the big move that's going to start it uh, going up into the uh, teens and then into the higher levels over the coming six months. But well, what I can say is that I love the fact that it's attempting these these kind of. Uh, um, it's like using a platform, and every time the trampoline it hits the, the level on the trampoline, it springs up. But it has to keep bouncing. It hasn't got the rocket ship to break away from the resistance level. This is the first time in the daily it's done that. And the weekly chart, the nine period moving average is at, I'll tell you now, it's at $12.11. No, I must get the right one. At $12.29. So this week, if United States Steel actually closes higher than on Friday at 4, if it closes higher than 12, I put it around about 12. 58 1263 that's a closing basis on the week on the weekly chart that'll really help the monthly chart so this is a good start to it and you've done the this is exactly what we've been talking about trying to just use your technique to identify a low get in get out but i'm also saying there's there's a point that united states still will become a core holding and this is the whole area that we'll be looking to see where does it find the kind of support that says, wow, it's not going back under 983, but it's going to hold, and this is a move that's going to have a lot more legs. 
I think the next week and a half is going to be a big test for it. So let's watch that one very closely. I don't see it going back into the tens anytime soon, but it, I don't see it flying up real quick because, you know, there's too many people going to take profits right now. And that's going to keep it pushed back somewhat. Right. So that's the modus operandi. And you've really just done that so well. Keep doing it, Scott. I love that. I love the fact that you're able to, uh, to, to add to your position in a way that you feel is comfortable for you, even if there are moments of uh, nervousness. But you are trading it beautifully. So just keep it up. And thanks for calling. Congratulations. That's fabulous. Thank you, Basil. Thank you. So, folks, I just want to look at the SLX. And this is what I'm talking about. You see, the SLX is the index. The index has, it's, I had said the other day that it's had a better chart formation than United States Steel. And I'm pleased because that's the full index of the steel stocks. But the weekly chart is still working very hard to build the kind of upside momentum in the technicals, that is, that would be combined with technicals and price. Because in other times when it's done it, the price never went up enough to say, wow, that's a nice breakout. So I'm looking at it at 35.24. SLX is a symbol. I suspect that at some point, um, the SLX, together with the heavy-duty cyclicals like Caterpillar, Deer, United Technologies, th those stocks um, are going to be telling us that there is a turnaround in the U.S. economy that is going to start to see bottom line improvements in areas where we've been looking at cyclical weakness and we want to see cyclical strength. So I just wanted to mention that. The other thing I had a question about was where did it go? Uh, GBTC. Oh, did not do GBTC. GBTC. I. Uh, oh, I didn't do it. I just showed the, the chart. So this is a very strong leg A. And what's happened, if you remember, let's go back. There was a guy on CNBC at some point. When was it? I think it was back in the summer. Yeah, it might have been that week of July the 29th. Said something about the uh, this group. And before you knew it, the stocks ran up sharply and they had this single leg A up. And it went from a low of 12.10. July, the week of the 29th of July. Oh, no, it was. That's a daily chart. The 29th of July and had a really big percentage move. It went to 15.75 on the 5th of August. Then it made the arch formation, or what we call the lowercase h, and it kept making those with lower lows and lower highs. It formed the rectangle base, and then it just took that base out, bam, on the, uh, this was, I think it was September, yeah. September the 24th, it just ran down to 10.55. Next next day, it took out the 200 period moving average, and that moving average was resistance, resistance, until it hit the low of 8.35 on the 23rd of October. I'll put that in right now, um, 8.25, did I say 23rd of October, uh, of August? 20, uh, 23rd. Um, yeah, and, and all of a sudden, it's gone. Can't be. It must have been October. There you are. October, and um, boom, we're looking at 11.15. So what I'm going to say, and the question is, uh, ex-CNBC pop from Friday, 5.30 options show. Oh, okay, that's what it was. Okay, that's good to know, but uh, congratulations to, uh, congratulations. We, we must say that Scott certainly played that very well once again. So what we're looking at is a single leg A, with the MACD moving up, stochastic really had a very, very strong move. It's at 38% after being in, in the single digits just a week or so ago. I like that. But I'm also looking at the way that the fast moving average has moved in the daily chart, suggests to me that 11.25 to 11.35 ish area might become some kind of resistance. If it's able to ignore all that, and for the buying to continue <clears throat> and support at 10.23 over the next week and a half holds, that's the 200 period moving average, which was support, then it was resistance. Now it has to become support again. If we, you start to see a move into the 11.35 area and any pullback is just minor, and then you make your leg B, I'm going to be impressed. That's what's going to, That question was, what do I think of it? I'll be very impressed if it does that. And it's had a lot of time since the high that was made at 16. 
on the 28th, week of the 28th of June at 17.40. Hey, I would say slumping to the eights. That's a big pullback. So this is the start of trying to find some kind of support. I'll be right back. Last segment to come, Dow's up 98. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. And just let me do this on a very short-term basis. I think we're getting kind of overbought. <clears throat> that doesn't mean to say you have to crash or anything like that. I'm just saying, look, leg E in the XLF. Fabulous move. Look, breaking out. This is leg C in the monthly chart. I've been waiting for that. Uh, I love it. Our bank stock's doing very nicely. Um, this is important. If you're looking at... Um, uh, let me do this. Caterpillar. Caterpillar had a spectacular day on Friday. I just, you wouldn't have expected it. And today's got a little doji candle in a leg E in the Chapman Wave methodology. Broken out of the weekly down channel. Finally, um, looking a little bit better because all time high, 173. <clears throat> low was 111 just uh, um, two months, three months ago. Now it's in the 140 area. This is a nice comeback. A little bit overboard. That's what I'm saying. Look at. Um, Let's skip IBM. Let's go to Triple M. Triple M. Even with all the bad news, it's in legs seen the daily. The weekly chart is attempting some kind of a, a cup formation. Uh, it needs a lot of work. But look at UTX, United Technologies, down now 40 cents at 142.56. 144.15 was the high. Three times it's coming to that 144 area. Well, almost 144. Yeah, 144 today. It did it. Oh, 144.63, that's an all-time high. It just made an all-time high. United Technologies. I, in leg F, unless it's recycled. So I'm just saying, be a little careful here. I think we're getting somewhat overboard. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a breather and it's necessary to have these 
timeouts so that you can uh, really get some sense of KBE or KBY, KBE. Uh, KBE, S&P, this is the bank ETF. Why have I not got this all notated? Spider S&P bank ETF. Um, yeah, leg A, B, C, D. Yeah, E in the um, in the daily. Weekly is in a channel, so it's in this trading channel. When it gets up into the 45, 46 area, it was, it was where it wants to reverse. Just be a little careful here. As I say, we've got these stocks, the lower price stocks. We're trying to conserve some money so we can put it to work on the next big sharp pullback. And uh, so we've got, got low price stocks that are doing very nicely. Um, so. Have a great day. Check out my opening calls, my daily newsletter, comprehensive newsletter. And uh, hope to see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom. And look, the little doji candle right now. You're at the low of the day. Got to be careful. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a wonderful day.